All right, welcome back. So in this episode, we're gonna focus on refactoring, but also more broadly, I'd like to talk about responsibility. And by that, I mean, when you're reviewing these components, you should always be thinking, should this component be responsible for that? And it's kind of a tough decision. It's something you will, you will figure out over time. So here's what I mean. Uh, if we take a look at the assignment list component, this component is responsible for displaying a list of assignments. But now as part of that, we've introduced all of this terminology related to tags. So I have this block here for displaying my tags. If we scroll down, we have this section here for tracking the current tag. Um, and then down here, we have a computed property for gathering and displaying all of the tags. And you can just as easily imagine uh, us adding a little button here to add a new tag. And if we took that approach, we would have to introduce another data property, uh, another method that would append this new tag. We would need some kind of logic to maybe save it to the database or at least uh, store it in local storage. So very quickly, this component that is really just responsible for displaying a list of assignments becomes aware of so many things related to tagging. Okay, so with that in mind, why don't we refactor this? And often what I like to do is start with the template. So this is the section that we will extract. And why don't we call the component, uh, how about assignment tags? Now on this note, you may have noticed, let me create this, that all of our components related to assignments begin with the word assignment. Uh, this is actually a pretty common practice in the view world. If nothing else, it's a nice way to group everything like so. Uh, imagine if this component was instead named createAssignment.js. Well, in a real project where we have dozens and dozens of files, create.js would be way down here, uh, separate from all of the other assignment-related components. So it's just a common practice that you can adopt if you wish. Okay, so let's export. We'll set up our templates and we'll paste that HTML block. All right, next we need to start a list of tags that we can loop over. Hmm, how should we do this? Well, right now our tags are being created here. But maybe I could extract this, bring it over to our computed property, and I'll paste that in like so. But now, yeah, we're in that situation again where in order for this to work, our tags component now needs access to all assignments. And I don't love that. Um, so again, an option might be, let's clean this up, to begin by passing our tags here. And maybe I could just do this inline dot map. And all I care about is the tag name. So this would be a way to pass the initial tags. So now you'll see that we run into another issue. I want to accept an array of tags, but now we end up in a situation where our prop is named tags, but we also have a computed property named tags, which we don't want and we can't do. So to skirt around this, you have a couple choices. One option would be simply change the computed name, like all tags. And that might be good because we are taking the initial set of tags and we are extending it to also include this all tag name as well. So that might be fine. Uh, another common approach is to do something like this, where you name the prop either data tags or even something like initial tags. That would then be your prop name, which would allow you to do this initial tags. And then your computed property could go back to being tags that delegates or defers uh, like so. Yeah, both of these are very common in the view world. Okay, next we need the current tag. So here's what I'm gonna do. For now, I'm gonna add it here, but I think we're gonna remove this. But yeah, this would migrate everything over. Okay, so now let's switch back. We will import it, import assignment tags. We will register it as a component, and then we use it in a template. Okay, let's have a look in the browser. We give it a refresh, and I still see my tags. Let's open up View Dev Tools. All right, here's our assignment list, and now I can see it does consist of a assignment tags component. But now our problem is if I click on one of these, uh, we're not re-rendering the assignment list. So let's figure out why. Well, I go in here, we click on it, we update the current tag, 
but there's no communication, is there? At no point do we communicate back to assignment list that it needs to then re-render uh, the assignments here. And further, we now have this issue where we're tracking the current tag here, but we also are tracking the current tag here. Okay, so your first thought might be, well, we've already learned about events. Maybe this is another situation where we emit an event. All right, let's see what that might look like. When you click on the button, instead of storing the current tag, I could get rid of that, we instead emit an event. Emit, and why don't we call this change, and we'll pass through the tag that was clicked. All right, now if I switch back, if we come up here, we pass through the initial tags, and then we listen for when it changes. And what we want to do is update the current tag. So I could say change current tag, we're going to do this in line, equals uh, the tag that was passed through. And when we are responding in line, like we're doing here, remember, we could just as easily uh, call a method, update current tag, right? But when we do it in line, we can access the parameter by using this magic event variable. Okay, so that would work if you think about it. When I click on a specific tag, we emit a change event and we pass through the tag. We then listen for that change event where we then update the current tag on this component and make it equal to the tag that was clicked. Okay, so now let's see what that might look like. I will click on math and it seems to be working, but now we have another issue. Uh, we are no longer highlighting the tag that was clicked. And that actually makes sense. If you think about it, if we go back to our tags, you'll remember that we only activate it if the current tag equals the one in the loop. But we don't have a current tag here. So maybe that should be passed through as a prop. All right, let's come back. We come over here. We have our initial tags. We have the current tag. And then we listen for an event. When this component announces that we've changed tags, we will update our state as well. All right, we check this out, and yeah, everything's working like it did before. Very cool. And also notice that because each of these assignment lists are their own instances, the tags will function independently. So notice here, we have only the tags that are available to this list, whereas this one also includes a science tag as well. But if we complete that, well, now there's no more uh, science tags available in progress. It has moved over to completed. And this is, at least for our example, this is what we want. Okay, so I'm happy with this. But in the next episode, I want to see, is there a way that we can use vModel on things other than basic form inputs? And spoiler alert, you can't. <laughs>